Hi, it's Anne from the Useless Crafter. So today I'm going to show you how to make this in Design Space. This is what it looked like um, right when I sent it to cut, and this is what it looks like afterwards. So you can see, I mean, I always have a hard time, um, you know, I have in my mind what I think it should look like, but once it's cut, the colors don't always go, and um, the seaweed didn't turn out quite the way I wanted to, so I switched things around. So I'll show you how to do that. But let's go, and I'm going to just show you all the images. And there's a lot of tips and tricks to this one that, um, you know, that will make your life a lot easier. Now, the bummer is I, I made this today. I put it all together. I thought I was recording. I didn't record. So <laughs> I'm going to try to show you all the things, okay? Um, so these are all the images down here. I'm going to try from now on just have it available so we're not searching for it so you know what the images are and I will go over um, just how to how to piece it together even though this is more the design space tutorial but I love this thing you can hear it shaking I mean look at all the sequins it's so cute all right so first thing is I'm going to take you over to create a fabrica so you can see where I got the cutest mermaid seahorse and narwhal um so it's create a fabrica oops my bad there we go and it is a dollar fifty and look how cute these images are I really like this one at the beginning but I needed something to kind of like sit across um I mean, just everything is so cute about this thing. And like I said, it's $1.50, or you could choose to get the membership. Now, if you choose to get the membership, which I have and I love because I get access to all the images and the fonts, um, you can use my code, which is the Useless Crafter 30, and you get 30% off every month of your subscription. So ask me if you have questions about it, but um, honestly, I use it quite a bit it comes with commercial license so you can you know sell with your products and stuff um all right so that's that let's go back to design space okay now I want to show you well, I guess maybe we can just start designing the other thing is I'm not going to show you how to create the circles because I've done that in a different video um how to slice it out and make this thing right here so this thing moves up and down um, we have a template on on Creative Fabrica for a dollar. So for a dollar, you don't have to recreate it. You can just, you know, use it all day long. <laughs> all right. Um, I think that's it. Let's get started. Uh, I'm going to make this smaller. Okay. First thing is um, I'm going to show you. Actually, I'm going to make myself larger again. Sorry. I want you to see the back of this. So the back really is just this doily background. So it's the one with all the little um, round dots, whatever, for that for the outside border. And part of her name, that's the only thing I weld, and it's a big piece. I don't weld any of the images down because then you're tied, unless you recut and redo some of this stuff, then you're tied to your layout. And you can see, I mean, look how much this layout has changed from when we first saw it over here. Now, if I had welded all the images, then we'd be stuck. Now, the reason why I, the, uh, the second reason why I don't is the pieces that I choose to add up here, because this background is so stable and sturdy, Look, it, it doesn't move or flop. So you know your materials, you know, that's why we, we do it that way. The name is good, everything is good. Uh, so I always recommend welding the name to the background, one of the layers, so that you have a really sturdy background. All right, now let's get started. Okay, um, all right, so I am going to get rid of this. First thing is let's bring in all our images, okay? So let's go over here. When you type images, everything that I wrote down, you need to put a pound sign in front of it, okay? So M111122A. Here's the tail. I love this. And apparently I purchased it <laughs> a long time ago that I don't even remember. But what I like about this is it is three layers. It's the top, the middle that has the purple or peach, I don't even know the colors right now. <laughs> and then the back is that dark green. So if you can see, I did gold, blue, and darker blue, okay? You can always go to Instagram to see better pictures. I will be posting this one today. 
So here's our mermaid tail images. Let's go and get everything else, okay? So the next one is the starfish and the shell. So let's insert that one. Oh, I guess I purchased that one too. This is crazy. I don't, I must have done this a long time ago. I usually don't purchase images from Design Space. I do have access though. All right, the next one is seaweed. And I like this one too. I like things with layers. So um, it's just prettier. It stands out more. It gives you the opportunity to use two different types of cardstock. So when I did this one, I did a light green regular cardstock and the dark green, I used glitter cardstock. So it really gives you a chance to like stand out um, and show the difference in materials and colors. All right, the last one is our other seaweed. And this one I love so much. Um, it is also two layers. And I'll show you when we get over to here what it looks like. I don't know if you can see it. I'll flip it around. It has, so what's nice is it's, um, let's ungroup it so you can see it. See, it? they're full cuts. So it's gonna be really sturdy, but it gives you a little bit of an outline. So I did, light blue, light blue cardstock with a pale green glitter cardstock. It was so pretty that I could not let it go, but it made my whole thing really busy. <laughs> so, but I found a way to use it in the end. What I ended up doing was I cut these into four individual pieces and that made it a lot easier to work with. Oh, I have, sorry, I have one more I need to add. I need to add the doily. So let's go over here and I don't think I have it written down. So let's see if I can easily find it. Oh, perfect, it's this one. I love this one and I'm gonna show you which one we end up using. Let me move this over, all right. Oh, that's not the one, shoot. That one's too even, sorry. Let's go back to images, doily, all right. It is this one so close i just like it because the shape is not i mean obviously it's symmetrical but it has that off balance of in and out of the circles i really like this one and i've used it for my last few and i use the maroon color one the second to the last okay so when you see this you can see all the different layers i'm just going to click on this delete it click on this delete click on this delete and i'm left with this one all right so now i'm going to upload my um the svg that we created here so it's a dollar <laughs> if you use my link i appreciate it because i get paid a little a bit in commissions okay so this comes with the, in the instructions so you have your top of your slider the bottom of the slider your foam circles that's going to give you um basically the border to put your sequins in here's your acetate and the back of the slider all of that goes on top of this general background, okay? Okay, so let's ungroup this. We can get rid of the words. So over here, I'm just gonna hit the shift key and delete all my words. Okay, and I'm gonna ungroup this. It comes grouped. Um, and I think each one of these come grouped. So let's ungroup that, grab this one, ungroup that. Okay, now, when we first designed this, I made, the foam circles really, really thin. And I sort of regret it. Um, I made it really thin so that it wouldn't show through. And I'll tell you what I mean. So this is the back of the whole shaker, okay? So just imagine you have a piece of paper, okay? Then we're gonna put the foam on top. This creates your little wall. So we can put sequins on the inside, right? Then you put your acetate layer on top. So you've enclosed your little sequins wall, right? What I like about this is the, the foam is covered by everything. Watch, when I put this shaker over, you can't see the foam at all, right? So that gives you an opportunity to really seal in your sequins and whatever you put in here. So I use double-sided tape or the glue tape uh, runner 
I make sure it's all sticking. But once I put my acetate layer down, I take my glue gun and I go in between these two layers and I seal the outside. I have not had any leakage since I started doing that. Um, but what I found is I have more room to make this foam a little bit thicker. Now I have the maker and it cuts perfectly with the rotary blade. I use the foam flex setting and it cuts beautifully. It will cut this thin. I used to have it this thin. But now what I do is since we have two layers and one layer is plenty to create um, that wall, but make your foam, make the second one smaller, okay? Then grab these two and go to a line and center it. And then grab the two and weld it. This just gives you a thicker foam center to deal with and that's it so <laughs> i just wanted to show you that okay so now that we have everything let's group it all together so it moves all as one okay so let's grab all of these align center and let's group it because we're going to size things and when we size it we want them all to be sized appropriately so this is our doily and don't worry about the sizing right now this says it's two inches it doesn't matter as long as everything is in um aligns with each other then we can resize it at the end okay so right now let's just make our thing match our doily okay right about there that looks good all right so i'm actually going to get rid of this right now because we don't need two sets of everything so um actually i'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna flatten it. So it's just an image, a picture image for us there. And I'm gonna make it smaller so that we have reference to it, okay? Okay, so let's go into upload. And these are my images from, I bought that file. So here's the first one, this one. And I went with, you know, I went with this one, this one and this guy. Okay, insert. And I wanna show you, this is my first trick that I wanna show you. Um, this is just, I mean, it's just so adorable, right? The little, everything's so cute. Now, my maker cut around the little bubbles right there for the starfish, no problem. But I was really concerned with these cute little purple things that, the Cricut was gonna to try to cut and it was gonna rip my paper. And I just didn't want everything to be perfect except for some of these. And then I would have to redo everything, right? So I'm gonna show you how I went about doing it. And this works because for this um, image, the color kind of works that way. But what I wanted to do is go to shapes, bring in a circle, and we're gonna make the circle small. So this is print and cut, right? So we're gonna send it to our printer and then the Cricut's gonna cut all around it. So it's gonna cut perfectly. Do you see, there it is. All right, now I'm concerned about this though. So what I did was I, let's make that circle white. So you can see there's white here, there's white in her hair. So no one's gonna notice that this, this white is gonna stand out. Let's bring the image to the front and we can make the circle smaller if we can grab it. Okay, so you see how the circle covers all that purple? And then I did this, oops. Then I grabbed the circle and the image and I flattened it. So it created, so when the Cricut goes to cut this, it's gonna cut around the tail, around the shells and just one big around the white circle and i can't tell you how many times my blade has caught on something and everything else looks amazing 99 percent of it looks great but there's a rip right here so i didn't want to do that and honestly no one would know that this was not supposed to have like this white little circle around it okay so i did that for this part right here this part as well and also on the seahorse, I did it right here and right here. I was okay with this one little circle right here and then it went all the way around, but I just didn't want it to get caught up here. So I did one circle that went right here. All right, so I'm gonna, 
Let's make this a little bit smaller. And this as well. This one was perfect the way it was. But I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. Okay, I'm going to do two more circles so you can see what I did. Okay, so let's bring in the shape the circle. And let's make it white because you have to choose the color. Once you flatten it, it's going to be whatever color you, you choose. So don't keep it black. It's going to be so obvious, right? So I think that kind of covers it. And we'll bring her to the front in a second. Let's duplicate that circle and let's get this one over here. All right, so let's bring the image to the front. And I mean, you can move that to make that a little bit better. Then that means this circle can be moved a little bit more over here. You don't want too much of the circle to be showing, but honestly, you can't tell because it's white and you're just looking at everything else and it looks so good. Hold on, I didn't grab the whole image. Okay, grab this. You want to grab just the mermaid and the two circles, okay, and then flatten. So now I'm just going to show you really quickly when we go to make it, what that looks like, okay? So she looks like this. You can't tell, but the circle is right here. It's going to cut around that, and then it's going to cut along all the edges, okay? Okay, so let's cancel that. Okay, so we have all our images in, and now we're just kind of sizing everything to the way we like it. Oh, we need the name. Sorry. The name, I did get the font from Creative Fabrica. I will show you what that looks like. This is Chloe. It's Hannah Berry Koo. I just love it because it's not thin. It's, I'm going to make it really big again. So you can see it's cute and delicate and intricate, but not thin. So it cuts no problem this top one is sparkle paper um then i have regular cardstock and then i had shimmer paper and then the back is sparkle paper again so i mean it's just really really pretty all right so once you have the name let's go into inkscape i'm going to show you how to do the offset okay so you save the name or you can type it in here someone didn't ask me why i use font lab instead of just bringing it up here there's a glitch in my system i don't my fonts don't carry over into inkscape so i always have to save my names and then i go to import and i'm going to import chloe where is chloe there it is so here's her name make sure you hit the lock button so that we can open this really big and now um i did what i did was I didn't like how the C came out right here a little bit, as well as the L. So what I did was I did object and I ungrouped it. And then I manually moved the C over a little bit. Oops, no, it didn't. Sorry. Let me grab the C. And you see, I got rid of that little thing right there. And then I think I did it as well with this. Okay. And I felt like the name was going up too much. Like the... Uh, that it starts the H down here. It moved a little bit higher with the L, a little bit higher with the O, a little bit higher with the E. So I wanted to balance this out a little bit. I moved the E back down a little bit and I moved the O. I think I moved the O a little bit more. And then the L just a little bit because I didn't want that tail of the L to stick out. And then I'm going to move this E down a little bit more and over a little bit, there we go. So now I'm just going to group it back together. So go to object and group, so it's one thing. So this is selected, take your cursor into the blank space, click here, so nothing is highlighted. Go to your paint bucket, pick a color, any color, because we'll fix it in design space. And we're gonna grow, shoot, I don't remember what I grew it by. I think I did, I think I did 20 and 40, so let's do 20. So now take your paint bucket and just click somewhere in the name. So I love it when it does that. And then do the four. Okay, click your arrow, click in the open space again, so nothing selected, go to paint bucket, pick another color, and this time grow by 40. And then again, and again, and then 
Um, I think you need there. Don't worry about that little space. Um, go to, oops, no, sorry. Get your arrow, grab everything, click path, object to path, file, and save as. Oops, sorry, I clicked the wrong one. File, save as. And then I already saved it. I saved it as Chloe Offset. So in Design Space, once you do that, then you go to Upload, Upload Image, Browse. You look for your name. So it would have been, um, would have been on my desktop, and it was Chloe Offset, right? You click on that, and then you insert it. Um, I already have mine, so I'm gonna upload and insert. So this one, Insert Image, and I'll show you how to fix the name when it comes in. So I'm just gonna move it some over here. Okay, let's ungroup. So here's our background. I'm just gonna move it so we can see it. Here's this one, arrange sent to the front so you can see it. Send that to the front. And then the Chloe part, weld it because you can see it's an in individual letters. So you want to weld it so it's one piece. So cute, right? And then here's our four arranged sent to the front. And then what I do is because we don't know what the sizing is going to be, I grab Chloe, a line, and I'm going to center it, and then I'm going to group it so that it moves as one whole piece, right? Same thing with the four. I'm going to grab it, um, align, center, and then group it. And now all we're doing is we're piecing our cake topper together. So let me go back up here. So here's our cake topper. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so everything's there on the screen. All right, so let's grab this. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so we don't worry about the colors. We'll deal with the colors in a second, right? I usually like my name on the bottom. Um, let's look at the mermaid tail. Uh, I'm going to ungroup it. I don't need this one. I wanted the tail to be inside my shaker. Oops, undo. Let's group the tail so that it moves together. All right. And it looks like the tail is maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. So the tail's going to be inside the sequence are going to be it's going to be with the sequence. Um all right. This little guy. Make sure that you do the white around it, okay? But the other thing is so my printer doesn't print well on cardstock. So when I do print and cut, it prints on regular copy paper. So I like to cut the outline of this in cardstock and then tape it together so that's really sturdy, okay? So how you do that is I'm gonna bring in a square. So you're gonna need to do this with this little guy and this little guy, okay? Unlock it, just make it so that it covers the whole mermaid, okay? Grab the two items. Uh, it didn't let me slice this time, that's weird. So this is flattened. Ah, oh, that's so weird. It let me do it earlier when I was creating this. So let me see if I'll try it again. Um, grab the two items. I should be able to flatten. I don't know. I mean, not flatten, slice. Um, all right, let's see if I can do it with this guy. And it's like so temperamental. <sighs> let's um, make sure that the seahorse is covered and let's see if i can do it this one okay so i can slice this one so just mess around with it. but see how like that's basically how it's going to cut but with cardstock i'm more comfortable with it but if you had done the white bubble it would just give you a more curved edge right there so this one you're going to do you're going to change from um i like to do my background in white so this is just going to cut in white we don't need this and there's our guy okay so this is going to be like this um let's bring that to the front arrange center front and again with the background you want them to be the same size right you want it to fit perfectly so go ahead and align 
center and group it. And that way everything gets sized accordingly, okay? So I'm gonna do it based on this image right here, okay? So the seahorse is over here. It's appropriate in size. This girl, I had her up here and she's kind of the right size. This guy I'm probably gonna make just a little bit bigger. I had him over here and then let's deal with this thing. So this was a full set, just ungroup it. Now this is layered, it has a back layer in yellow and then the top, right? So group that, so again, it's we can size it all together, right? So this was right here. Um, we want this shell as well, let's group that. Now I'm gonna, let's see, turn this around. Where's my little slider? My slider is somewhere over here, so my four is gonna go there. I make the four a little bit bigger. Okay. All right. Um, I had two shells on mine because I didn't like the color that printed out the or that cut the first time. So I did another two. So then I incorporated both of them. I mix matched them and then I incorporated both. So here's my four. It's on my slider. We just have the seaweed that's left. So I duplicated this one and then I went to flip and flip horizontally so that you have the mirror image. So I had one over here, one over here, and probably make it a little bit bigger. Okay, and then this guy, I made it bigger. Oops, undo, let's do both of them at the same time. So let's align, center, and group it, and then make it big, okay. And then I'm just gonna bring the name to the front. There, so once you like the size of everything, uh, you know, to itself, like everything accordingly, let's get rid of these. Then you can grab the whole thing and say, oh wow, this is 11 and a half inches, way too big. I normally do two inches smaller than whatever size my cake is. So if it's a nine inch cake, I make this seven inches. So then you can grab the whole thing. Let's say you make it around seven inches, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. Now, I'm gonna show you how to weld that back layer with the name, okay? So with the name, the offset, is in the back. Well, first let's duplicate the name. Oops, hold on. Let's move that out of the way. Okay, so we know it's like right around here. We're gonna take this and we're gonna grab the doily. Did I grab the doily? No, okay, let's grab the doily and grab the offset and weld it. So now you have a really nice background that's gonna hold everything. I would just put it back and send it to the back. So there's your name. This goes on top. And let's make this bigger so you can see what we have. There. Now, when you're changing the color, this is how I would do it. Um, oops these little guys didn't come over. I would grab them from over here. So like, let's say this one, I, even though it's grouped, you don't, you can select the individual items. So the top layer of the starfish, I made it like a orange glitter. So I'm gonna change it to orange. This guy, I ended up making it blue. So things start to change color, right? Um, the mermaid tail. So the top layer, I did a pink glitter. Then the back layer, I did a light blue. And then the back layer, I did a dark blue. And that's what my tail looks like. So just one by one, you're gonna go and change all the colors to what you want so that when you go to make it, obviously you have a lot of colors, but not too many, right? So like the inside of this 
shell can maybe match the inside of the starfish or something else so that you're using not that many colors, but still you're seeing a lot. So I'm just going to flip this bigger again so you can see what I have and all the different layers. And where's my four? So here's my four. Here's my extra tail that I messed up because I didn't like the color after all. So you can see all my mistakes. I try to incorporate it and just make it really full and really pretty with all the details because it's already cut. Nothing I can do there. But once you make one, then I have my color template. I have my uh, card stocks, the papers that I want to use. Um, and that makes it, that cuts back on the mistakes and the experimenting. Alrighty, I hope that was helpful. Please follow me on Instagram or Facebook, then you can see better pictures. Um, it's the Useless Crafter. So on Instagram, it's the Useless Crafter, no spaces in between. And then on Facebook, it's, um, I think it's just Useless Crafter. And then, of course, you're already following me on YouTube. So, all right, I hope this was helpful. Let me know how I can help you. If you have a special request, just post your comments, or you can send me an email to anne at theuselesscrafter.com, and that's Anne, A-N. All right, bye, guys.